I am Paul Popov, son of Pastor Haralan Popov. My dad suffered for over 13 years in communist prisons in Bulgaria. Our family knows what it is to be systematically tortured for our Christian faith. Sadly today, persecution of Christians continues worldwide. As a journalist and missionary, I have seen firsthand the evil that exists across the globe as thousands of Christians are being imprisoned tortured and murdered all because they profess that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior. One recent example of this horror is the imprisonment of my dear friend Peter Jasek, a Czech missionary who did nothing more than try to help a sick Christian young man in the Muslim country of Sudan. Peter Jasek suspected that the Sudanese secret police were following him but did not expect that they were photographing his every move, day and night. Here is Peter's story as told in his own words. Here how his imprisonment and torture made his faith in Jesus grow and his suffering a privilege. Uh, the ISIS guys that I was uh, put in the prison, uh, same prison cell with, uh, they were very violent. They started to limit my freedoms of movement in the cell while they were praying or while they were reading Quran. And uh, later on they started to slander me with bad words and then even attack physically. But later on, when I realized that there were, the Lord had a different purpose for me in prison to share the gospel, I stopped praying uh, to be released. But we were so excited uh, from the fact that we were able to preach the gospel to the hopeless people in prison and that uh, gave us such a joy, such a fulfillment. I can tell you that I asked the Lord and I told him that I don't want this privilege but only when it's over and you came through it victoriously then I would agree with those courageous believers that I interviewed in the past that it is a privilege to suffer for the name of Christ. But we told to ourselves, we were already facing death penalty. Mm -hmm. We were already in prison. What worse could happen to us? So we were really free to preach the gospel and we were not putting any self limits on us and self restrictions on what we would pre like to preach on or what we would not. And uh, I was reading Psalm 100, uh, 126 and it says literally that when the Lord brought the captive of Zion back uh, to Zion, that our hearts uh, were rejoicing, our mouths uh, were filled with laughter and we were like in a dream. Mm -hmm. and imagine I'm reading this Psalm 126 and a few seconds later when I'm reading about this joy, laughter and uh, being like in a dream, uh, the guards came and announced, Peter, you are free. We even now keep receiving letters. After mm -hmm. being released more than a year, we still, uh, there are days when we keep receiving uh, through our mail letters from Christians, literally from all over the world, from Canada, America, uh, Australia, uh, Europe. Uh, and we receive letters that people are still rejoicing with us or uh, telling us how they were praying for us mm -hmm. when I, I was in Sudan. We trusted the Lord that He was the one who had the keys from our cell. But when we were able to see how Christians were acting on our behalf, how they were protesting against uh, the regime and uh, for our release in front of the Sudanese embassies in the world, that was extremely encouraging to know. Thank God, Peter Yasek is now free. However, so many Christians are still in prison for their faith in Jesus Christ. Sadly, they are so often forgotten. When my dad was in communist prisons in Bulgaria, letters came from Christians abroad. They often came when he was in the moments of deep despair. God's timing is perfect. 
I hope that the Holy Spirit has moved you to pray for the suffering Christians today. Not only to pray, but also to take action. Something as simple as writing a few words of comfort can keep a Christian prisoner from losing hope. They need to know you are praying for them and that they are not forgotten. Thank you for your love and compassion. May God richly bless you.